Welcome back guys. Today we're going to take a look at Ecolab. And the reason why we're taking a look at Ecolab is because Bill Gates owns a stake in this company. It's, he owns $1.2 billion worth of Ecolab. And so I didn't know what that company was, so I decided to take a look at it. And here's the five-year chart. It's been up 27%. Um, kind of also, it dropped quite a bit in here in 2022, and now it's risen quite a bit back up. Um, seems to trade along with like Amazon. This this looks like Amazon stock, honestly. But uh, yeah, 27% in the past five years. It's a $66 billion company, large company. I mean, if Bill Gates is investing in it and he's got quite a large stake, then it's probably a pretty large company. And the price to earnings ratio is 43. That's very steep. And they, they have a dividend yield of 1%. Yeah. Crazy price to earnings ratio. Now, I have a theory as to why it's so high, and it's not really because of growth. Because if we look at the growth of this company, I mean, it's not super stellar. It went from $13.84 billion to $15.3 billion over the course of six years. And so that's like, what, 2% a year? Uh, not even. I mean, it's had pretty strong growth coming out of 2020. And on a quarterly basis, it's still growing at 5%. So, like, the growth moving forward, I mean, it's hard to say if it's going to be 2% or if it's going to be upwards of 6 or 8%, you know, um, just based on the historical data. And it transfers pretty well in their margins. Like, it's a pretty consistent business. Um, in terms of their balance sheet, their balance sheet is okay. It's uh, got 7.8% billion in debt or 7.6 billion in debt or net debt so we'll have to take that into account when we do our model and in terms of cash flows their cash flow is about 1.5 billion a year so with a debt of 7 billion and a cash flow of 1.6 billion uh, it will take a few years to pay off that debt of course now they don't really do much with their stock they don't buy back a lot of stock they don't issue well i mean they they issued some stock. They bought back a lot of stock in 2020, which actually that's a great decision because the, the price was so much more suppressed. And now they're actually issuing some stock. Well, they bought back quite a bit of stock last quarter, even with the share price being so high. Um, uh, otherwise, they, they pay most of their cash flow out in dividends, otherwise, or they just keep it on their balance sheet for expansion or to pay off debt. Looks like they paid off quite a bit of debt. They paid off quite a bit of debt. They, they paid some in dividends. Uh, let's look at the stats. Their return on invested capital is around 8%. Gross margin of 40%. Uh, yeah, translates pretty consistently into net margin at about 7 to 11%. Uh, and the analysts are projecting 12% moving forward. Uh, so what does Ecolab actually do? Well, I found this website that they have, and their products and services are wide ranging. They've got tons of products and services in all these different industries, and then you click into one, and it's like, oh, there's more. There's more like ways you can break it down, or pulp and paper, manufacturing, glass. Okay, they're in like chemicals, so they have chemical products, um, but they also do it seems like they do some consulting. Like I click into data centers here, I think, if it will load. Okay, for some reason it just froze. Okay, anyway, yeah, they've got a lot of different products. Uh, yeah, I was going through their, their slides, investor slides, and it's very, very feel good type of stuff. Like lots of innovation and stuff and innovation in all these areas. It doesn't really give you like a lot of hard data to work with. They're empowering the best teams in industry. Like they've got a bunch of scientists and engineers, digital experts. Um, they operate in 170 countries. Pretty crazy. And then they they're growing their impact. So this is a lot of feel good stuff. They're they're reducing the amount of water. They're reducing the amount of CO2 being used. They're providing food and health to people. So. Yeah, lots of different uh, feel good feel good stuff, and then they've got their goals. They're sustaining capital returns, so they they repurchase some shares and they pay some dividends. 
over the years. Uh, yeah, and then this is what they think the market opportunity is. So right now they've got 15 billion in sales and they think it could be 10 times that amount in the future. But their objectives here, this is what I, we should focus on here, five to 7% in sales growth. So they think that they're gonna grow their revenues by about 6% a year. And then they think, or they're hoping to get up to a 20% operating margin, um, which, or 20%, yeah, 20% operating margin, I think that is. Um, so that's not quite net income. And I don't know how they're gonna get 12 to 15% EPS growth. Um, I guess they're just gonna have to do a ton of stock buybacks in order to get that type of EPS growth, or they're gonna have to expand margins a lot. Because if you're growing sales by 6%, how are you supposed to grow your EPS by 12%? So you have to have expanding margins or you have to do lots of share buybacks. Uh, so I thought that was kind of optimistic, especially when their, their sales growth goals are so much lower. But let's go to the analysts. And the analysts are projecting 6.59 going up to 7.4. That is like a 12% increase along with what the, the analysts are thinking. and then. We've got, or not what the analysts, but the the company, the company thinks 12%. And their revenue growth this year, 4% going to 4.5%. 4 so slow revenue growth is projected. In terms of stats, let's take a look at that. Short percentage is extremely low. That's crazy low. So that's a super, super green flag. And let's go to the model. So the thing is, this company is trading at a 43 price to earnings ratio, which is very steep. And so that's why this model is not going to look so good because the, their current valuation is very, very high. I put the earnings per share estimate here, revenue estimate here, buybacks to zero, net debt of 7.6 billion, discount rate of 10% because I want a 10% return on all my stocks and an exit multiple of 25. That's 25 is kind of steep, even for this company. However, however, um, I guess they're projecting a long runway for growth, so I guess 25 is okay. And we go to the discounted earnings model. This is what I have, them growing their earnings by 7% a year. Now, their EPS could grow faster than this if they do share buybacks, but this is just their gross earnings, and I think 7% is fair. And in terms of their revenue margins model, I have their revenue growth at 6%. That's what they're projecting between five and 7%, and then profit margin of 12%. They haven't hit 12% in the past five years, but uh, the analysts are projecting 12% this year. And so I just project that same going forward. They think that they're gonna be able to grow this profit margin um, a little bit more probably, but I think 12% is fair, especially since I haven't hit it in the past five or six years. So projecting that moving forward, we get a fair share price of $161, but when you account for the, the amount of debt that they have, then it drops to 134. Usually debt's not a super big deal, and it gets paid off over time. So usually the fair share price is gonna be somewhere in between this number. And so I'd probably put their fair share price around like 145 or $150 a share. And with them trading at 233, they are, are quite overpriced at this moment. Now, if we go back to their chart, let me. If we go back to their chart, their five-year chart, they were actually trading around $150 a share in here, and they even got down to $157 in October. So it would have been a much better time to buy around these levels where they were actually around their fair share price. However, now I think that they have expanded their price way, like a lot, and now the opportunity has passed to buy into this company. So I, I would personally buy some other company rather than this. I think that if you bought them today, you maybe expect like a 5% return, not even a 5% return, like a 4% return. However, this is very much a, like a feel good company, like ESG company, environmental and what safety. What does ESG even stand for? It's something with the environment, but yeah, this company is trying to drive any innovation in that space. So, and I mean, the world hopefully is going in that, in that direction. However, I'm I'm here to make money. I'm not here for the feel feel good stuff. So, yeah, that's what I think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and make sure to hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one.